So there's there's something else that um, super fascinating that you speak about, um, and that's cultural alexithymia. Can you kind yes. of explain what that is and how you came to that conclusion? Yeah, that was part of my own kind of waking up process of looking at my life and looking at the lives of people around me and seeing through this lens of like, wow, we really do everything we can to not recognize emotions and feelings. And, and it's intrinsic to our language. So like when I said, when you see through this lens, even your perception of mental health and mental health disorders will change. So a good, a salient one there is like stress or anxiety, right? That's really common buzzwords that people are stressed out or people have anxiety disorders or I suffer from anxiety, even if it's not a clinical condition. And yet, if, when I look at that, I see that as a symptom of our lexithymia, because what is anxiety? right? Basically, we define it as I have all this physiological activation going on in my body. And so I, I have to learn to breathe and calm down or distract myself or go have a drink or take some drugs, and that will calm down my body. And then I'll be able to live without my anxiety, right? Once you kind of wake up to the emotional realm, you go, well, what's your body doing dancing with all that energy just so randomly? And it's like, it turns out it's not random. It turns out you're emotionally activated, but no one's asking you how you're feeling. They're getting you to focus on your body and not your emotions. And so we have anxiety disorders instead of activated and unresolved emotions that we not need to work with. So that's one example of cultural Uh The other, you know, really basic stuff is we, if you look at the triune brain, we have 12 or more years of schooling that we teach the intellect all sorts of stuff about math and you know computers and history we have physical and artistic endeavors that we train people into sports and you know uh, musicians and everything all about physical training what kind of training do we do for the emotional brain what what do you get there almost nothing. And if you do, it's very indirect and maybe in the arts, you know, for expression and stuff, but no really understanding of what's going on or how to master that system. The, the part that's really shifted for me is I used to be perplexed on how is it we could be this evolved, especially if we've got the triune brain that we've been moving through and have all this intellectual dominance and not understand the emotional system. And that was where Integral helped me. And, and I'll just do a short foray into that. Um, basically, when you look at developmental theory, I grew up, basically, I was lucky enough or, or <laughs> um, cursed enough to have lived through three developmental changes in our culture. I grew up in the end of the 50s and 60s were very traditional role-oriented consciousness. And then modernism was just coming into its fore and, and height with the technological revolution and everything. And, you know, in the 80s, 90s, whatever. And then postmodernism has emerged. And when I look at it developmentally, I go, oh, right. Emotions get in the way of the rules and roles that you're supposed to play out in traditional consciousness emotions and feelings get in the way of your achievement oriented goals of modern you know orange consciousness and it's not till postmodernism where we care about depth of contact that feelings become important but unfortunately we've instead of repressing all the feelings like what happened when i was growing up you get punished out of them like one of the oddly universal kind of uh, phrases that i hear across cultures is this you want to cry? I'll give you something to cry about. Which was a traditional thing of, you know, if you're going to cry, I'm going to punish you. Like I literally was spanked until I stopped crying. That was that was how they dealt with it. So you repress emotions. Now that we embrace emotions and we allow them out and we ask our kids how they feel, we've got all this wonderful emotional energy that isn't being channeled anywhere and not repressed. And I think that's part of why we have so many cases of, quote, ADHD and such things. 
because we literally have all this emotional energy running wild and we don't know how to channel it, process it and resolve it. And so we just got a whole other set of challenges, you know, not the same ones as the traditional wings where you suppress it, but it's a different set. And I, and there's also progress in there, but it really helps me understand why the cultural alexithymia was and is going away and how important it is for us to actually understand the emotional system and learn how to work with it on its own terms.